Aloha, my friends, and welcome to the all-new, unscripted Maui Craft Kitchen. That's right, I'm gonna be honest. I made a script, I read a script, and I'm not good at reading a script. So I'm gonna stop reading a script. I'm going to be a little more personal with you, a little more me, for a little more you. Is that conceited? I hope so. So today, we're going to end our three-part series that I like to call Ma! The Meatloaf! In this series, we've been taking your average, everyday meatloaf and spinning it right around and making something completely new with it. So far, we've done a chicken meatloaf with broccoli and smoked cheddar. We've done a pork meatloaf with mushrooms and garlic. And today, we're going to end this series with the meatless loaf. That's right. This is going to be a vegetarian meatloaf. The meatless loaf. This is a base of millet. Yeah, this is unscripted. You might see some weird pauses and some weird hand gestures. I know. So it's a base of millet, packed full of veggies, totally delivers on flavor. I loved this. I couldn't believe it. First time, knocked it out of the park. So get ready, because we're also going to be making a creamy roasted red pepper gravy. So get ready to rock out with your brock out, because we're gonna work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. All right, my friends, first things first, we are going to cook the millet. Get your pot hot over medium high heat and toss in the oil. Invite the millet on over to the party and toast it up for a few minutes. I'm showing you this with half of what the recipe calls for, because I already cooked what I need and I don't need any more cooked millet in my fridge. The procedure is exactly the same. Your quantities will just appear a bit larger than mine here. Toss the millet around as it toasts, trying to keep an even heat by lifting it off the burner every now and then. Toasting the millet is going to give it a deeper, nuttier flavor, far superior to that of its untoasted counterpart. They will start to get a little vocal by snapping and popping, this is totally normal, don't panic. After a couple of minutes, add in the salt and give it a little shimmy. Pour in your high quality H2O and butter it up before we let it come to a boil. Now reduce the heat to a simmer Cover it and let it cook for roughly half an hour. To check it, just make a little well in the middle. If it still has water in it, you're not done yet. Keep on cooking. When your well hath runneth dry, pull it off of the heat and leave it to rest covered for 20 minutes. Transfer it to a sheet pan and let it cool while we get working on our veggies. There really is no rhyme or reason to the way I cut everything. I was just trying to make everything a little bit different. So just do whatever you're feeling in the moment. There are no rules. Why, you can rip them, dice them, grate them. Okay, I do remove the seeds from the zucchini and summer squash. But then it's right back to chopping, slicing, and dicing. Move this beautiful array of natural colors onto a sheet pan. Coat them in oil and sprinkle with salt. I like to keep the beets separate so they don't bleed all over the other veggies and make our meatless loaf look like a murder scene. Spread them out in a thin layer, turn your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and put them right in on the bottom rack. No need to wait for it to preheat. Cook them for 20 minutes, rotating the pan once halfway through to ensure even cooking. While our veggies cook away, we are going to mix the half and half, breadcrumbs and egg together in a small bowl. 
This will hydrate the bread and make our end product much more moist. Fresh ground spices always have a much more pungent aroma. I highly recommend grinding your own where you can. Now you're going to mix the millet with the seasonings, salt, and breadcrumb mixture. It is really important to mix this very well and squish it around a lot so it holds together better. I know that you guys are much better than me at following a recipe and will actually use the 800 grams of cooked millet that the recipe calls for instead of 1000 grams like I've done here. It will still work. Mine just won't hold together as well and might be a little drier than yours. So just follow the recipe and you'll be just fine. Throw in our gorgeous vegetables and gently mix it together. I try to keep my fingers open here so I crush the veggies as little as possible. We want them to stay intact. Bring it on down to the lubrication station. Oil up your five by nine by two inch loaf pan now. I don't like to waste anything, so here is yet another awkwardly long hand oiling scene brought to you by Maui Craft Kitchen. Silky and smooth. Enough with the lube. Take your meatless loaf filling and stuff it right into that loaf pan, pressing it down firmly to remove any and all air pockets. Pack, 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 all day long. Pack, pack, pack while I sing my song. Gonna pack my loaf, pack it good. Pack my loaf like a good boy should. Cut one tablespoon of butter into four pieces and spread them along the loafer. Bake this on a liner in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 60 minutes, rotating once halfway through cooking. When your beautiful meatless loaf is done, just slap some plastic wrap on it and let it set up for two to three hours. The longer, the better. This rest helps it hold together a lot more. While it is taking a nap, we can start our red pepper sauce. Blend together the peppers, half and half in water. Get a sauce pot hot, maybe not quite this hot, and melt your butter. Add the flour in and cook for just a minute. In small intervals, whisk in the red pepper mix, being sure to get rid of any lumps before adding more liquid. This method will make our end product very smooth. Add in the salt and seasonings and give it a whisking. Keep it on the heat, whisking occasionally until it begins to thicken. When it can grab a hold of a spoon and not run, it is ready to go. After your meatless loaf has had a nice rest, flip it out onto your cutting board. Using a wet knife so it slides easily, slice some pieces off of your loafer. A 
Again, yours will be less crumbly than mine. Lay down a healthy amount of our roasted red pepper bechamel, swirl it out a bit, keeping it circular, and lay a slice of meatless loaf right on top. This looks so damn good that even your kids are going to want to eat it. They'll be begging you for vegetables. It don't have to have meat to be delicious. I told you this meatless loaf rocked. I was right. I know I was. I know you're not going to be disappointed. Give it a shot. You're going to love this. Break it out at your next dinner party. You're going to be the star yet again. These meatloafs, meatloaves, meatloafs, anybody? In the comments, let me know. Loaves, loafs, when referring to the meat variety, I'm not really sure. I'm going to go with loaves. These meatloaves in this series rock the party that rock the party. You know it, and I know it. If you liked today's video, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. It really helps me further this channel and keep these videos rolling for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Many mahalos and much aloha.